Hey yo, I'm the MMA loser and I'm back with another video. And if you have seen the thumbnail that you know that I'm that I want to talk about UFC 298, I want to talk about the predictions regarding UFC 298. And recently I haven't been making any videos, any good videos, because it's just that I've been a bit busy. I'm really confused about certain things uh, which is not related to YouTube. So I need to focus on that. I've been preparing for some exams. So <clears throat> that's a different story. And the recent couple of fights, Imavo versus Dolidze and Joe Pfeiffer versus uh, Tucker Manson. Uh, I just didn't feel like making a video regarding that. But, but, but today I want to talk about UFC 298. I want to start from the early prelims or rather the prelims. I want to talk about this man, Rinia Nakamura, the Rinia man. Uh, the Japanese Bo Nickel, former world champion. He's a wrestler. I think he's 28 years old at this point of time. I don't know how old he is. But he's one of the most exciting prospects, according to me. He is 8 0. He is undefeated. He has got really incredible wrestling. In his last fight, he, uh, he displayed his dominant wrestling, but he could not get a finish. I don't know who that was against. But. I genuinely think he can be a force to reckon with in the Bantamweight division. Now, how will he? How well will he do against Carlos Vera? I do, I have no idea who this dude is. So that kind of makes it interesting. Let me figure out who this dude is. Okay, we have some information regarding Carlos Vera in here. Finally, uh, Carlos Vera is a 36 years old uh, veteran. He is 11 and three. Actually, not a bad record, and he's on a four fight winning streak. So pretty good record if you consider, but he hasn't fought in over a year, almost one and a half year he hasn't fought. So kind of interesting he says, uh, that he's fighting against Rinya Nakamura. But of course, I'm going to bet. I'm not going to bet against uh, Nakamura. Let me take a look at Nakamura's stats once again. He's 28 years old and he's going to turn 29. He is five feet seven, 136 kgs or 6 to 169 uh, kgs or 136 pounds that is what they mean in his last fight he won by unanimous decision and prior to that he won by ko ko submission decision tko ko ko well he promised in his last fight that this in this fight he's going to get us some uh, he's going to get a finish he has really good grappling he has really good wrestling i just want to see him get some finish because this guy can be a star he grew up in a household which was really in uh involved with MMA, even Carlos Newton probably went to his house when he was very young. So the dude is, he just has all the tools. Um, that's all I'm saying. He has a lot of tools and hopefully he does well. Now, I don't want to talk too much about this because I don't know nothing about Carlos Vera and I'm not going to say anything bad about Rinya Nakamura. So maybe Carlos Vera can surprise us with a crazy knockout. Who knows? Who knows? Right? That will be an upset victory for Carlos Vera. But I hope that doesn't happen. Because I just want to see Rinya Nakamura win. Because he just seems like one of those dudes who can really hurt you. Uh, now, moving on to this heavyweight fight. I, I think Justin Tiafal is going to knock out this Marcus Rosario de Lima. I haven't seen him win a single fight in UFC. So, I'm going to bet for Justin Tiafal. Look, I'm not a betting man. But if I was a betting man, then I would say Justin Tiafal. The dude hits like a truck. I think he has that... Uh, what was his name? Mark Hunt. He kind of has that Samoan Mark Hunt. Uh, Mark Hunt-esque physique, that kind of ability as well. He hits hard. That's all I'm saying. He hits hard. That's all I'm saying. Uh, Mackenzie Dern versus Amanda Lemos. I don't know who's going to win. Probably Amanda Lemos because she's ranked number three. Mackenzie Dern at times does well, but we don't know what version of her is going to show up. Uh, she at times really has problem with her striking. So hopefully she doesn't fumble. She doesn't make any mistake against uh, Amanda Lemos. Don't want to talk too much about it. I like Mackenzie Dern anyway, but I think Amanda Lamos is going to take that win. Now, the main card. The opener is Fluffy, a.k.a. Anthony Hernandez. He's fighting against uh, Roman Kopilov. Yeah, he, he looks like a Charlie... Uh, what was his, uh, what is that guy's uh, name? Charles Hooper? Charlie Hooper? Chase Hooper? I forgot that guy's name. Probably Charles Hooper. Uh, whatever that uh, featherweight fighter or i think now he's fighting in chase Hooper. he's probably fighting in lightweight right now he, he's going to have a son can you imagine he's he's younger than me i'm 23 he's like 22 
and he's going to have a son. Crazy, man. Crazy, dude. And I, I'm, I, and I'm not even sure about what to do with my life. Okay, I'll make a, I'll probably start a channel where I just talk about random things that I do on a daily basis and end up getting into trouble and get up how I get out of them. Yeah, but in right now, let's focus and talk about Anthony Hernandez. Fluffy has looked good recently. I don't, I think his record is eleven and two. In his last fight, he probably won. If I'm not wrong, I mean, I don't know who he won against. Is this? I think they. Oh yeah, that's Fluffy. Okay, yeah, he's on a four-fight winning streak. He last lost to Kevin Holland. Now Kevin Holland is a dangerous fighter, but I don't know who's better fighter, Kevin Holland or Roman Kopilov, because Roman Kopilov is he's on a crazy win streak himself. Uh, and the Russians are kind of dangerous. That's all I'm saying. And Fluffy has got good submission. I think so. I think he has got good grappling because he defeated uh, Edma Shabazian. Uh, that's not exactly a good win, man. That's that's not exactly a good win. But Mark Andre Boreal, that's kind of a good win. Josh Frame, Rodolfo Vieira. I mean, these are not exactly high class names. The biggest name that he has fought against is Jun Young Park and Kevin Holland. I don't know much about. He defeated Brandon Allen. Whoa, that's the biggest name probably that he defeated. I, if we talk about skill wise, he defeated the best fight. Uh, the best fighter in his resume is Brandon Allen. Now, Brandon Allen might be the dark horse of the uh, middleweight division, and he's very good. That's all I'm saying. That is all. In his last fight, I think he submitted Paul Craig, right? I think so. I'm not sure. But Brandon Allen is a really, really dangerous fighter. But he defeated Brandon Allen. So, big props to Anthony Hernandez for that. Now, let us take a look at Roman Kopilov's record. He's 32 years old. How old is Fluffy? He is 30. Okay, Kopilov is a bit older than him. Kopilov doesn't look older. Maybe because of his hairstyle, because of his demeanor, he just looks young. He also defeated Josh Prem, Claudio Ribeiro, Punale Soranio, Alessio Di Chirico. Whoa. He has defeated a lot of Latinos. That's <laughs> When you look at his resume, he has defeated a lot of uh, <laughs> Latinos. And he had a decision loss back in 2021. Since then, he has been on a forced fight win streak. Both of these fighters have been on a four fight win streak. I just don't know who's going to win this fight because I haven't seen much of Roman Kopilov. I've only seen him, his highlights. He has got really good striking. And I don't know. I genuinely do not know who's going to win in this fight. But I think Kopilov should be the favorite. If he's the favorite, then I say that uh, bet against him. Bet for Hardanis to win by a unanimous decision. I think Hernandez is good. Like if he can take it to the ground, I see Hernandez winning this by a decision. So I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going. I'm going to go out and take an. Un I'm just going to say an Anthony Hernandez is going to win this fight by unanimous decision. Triple C is fighting against the machine, Marab the Valis Billy, aka All Joe's training partner, his best friend, his uh, whatever we want to call it. I don't want to say anything wrong against anybody, but you know the man who was gatekeeping. Also, and the bantamweight division. Now he finally wants to fight for the belt, and the UFC is making it very difficult for him by giving him contenders. He is fighting against Henry Cejudo, Triple C, uh, former Olympic wrestling freestyle wrestling 2008 gold medalist, and former two-time UFC champion. That is a flyweight champion and also the bantamweight champion. And I mean, arguably one of the best combat athletes that we have in the that we have had in recent history. Uh, Barab is 5'6". How tall is Nina? Nina Ansarov? Uh, was it Nina? No, not Nina Ansarov. Nina, the reporter. The, uh, the Playboy magazine reporter. Sean's best friend. Sean Strickland's best friend. Uh, she's really tall. I didn't even know how tall she was. Because she looks tiny compared to Sean. She looks really like a giant compared to Barab. And Triple C is shorter than me. So it's kind of weird, man. Yeah. Because she is shorter than me and Marab is of my height. So, yeah, whatever, man, whatever. I'll talk about that some other video. But uh, I think Marab is going to win this fight. I just don't know why. I feel like Marab is going to win this fight. He's just... But then again, the, the, this is going to be a three-round fight. So, Triple C might have a chance against Marab. Uh, because Marab... I don't know if Marab can knock people out. I don't know if he has any knockout wins in his career. They both have pretty similar records. 16 and 4, 16 and 3. Uh, the only difference is that Sahudo is a two-time world champion. 
whereas Barab has never even come close to touching the belt. The, the closest that he has got to touching the belt was when Aljo was wearing it in his waist. And they were having some, you know, training sessions. Uh, let me take a look at his record. What the hell am I doing? Now, how old is Barab? I don't even know how old he is. He's on a 9-5 winning streak. That's a great winning streak when you consider the talent pool in the Bantamweight division. And I don't know. I just feel like Murab is going to win this fight just by uh, takedowns, just by attempting takedowns. I think he has one of the craziest record, probably attempting 40 takedowns and landing five of them. But that was against Piotr Jan. Piotr Jan has good takedown defense, but he's not a former Olympic champion. He's not a great wrestler himself. But Henry Cejudo is a really good wrestler. If you just talk about accolades, if you just talk about uh, pure wrestling abilities, then Henry Cejudo is the best that the UFC has ever had. He lost to Ricky Simon by a uh, technical submission. And then uh, before, prior to that, he lost to Frankie Sinez. <coughs> Split decision. And after that, he has defeated John Dodson, Cody Stebman, uh, Marlon Moraes, Jose Aldo, and Piotr Jan as well. He doesn't fight that often when you look at Barab. Like he does, he fights really less. Even Henry Sahudo in his last fight. When did Henry fight last? I don't even know. He fought Aljo in his last fight, right? Uh, he lost decision. Yeah, he fought in 2023, and Barab also fought in 2023. Uh, I think this version of Henry Sahudo is going to be a bit more fresh compared to the one that fought against Aljo because he was, um, even though he was prepared, but there was ring rust. And he's 37 years old. That's something that we need to take into account. How old is Marab? Marab, Marab, Marab. Marab is 33. So Marab is four years younger than uh, Sabudo, but Marab looks older for some weird reason. Maybe because of the genes and all the... I don't know. He just looks old. Uh, the Messenger, Henry Sabudo, Triple C, King of Cringe. I don't know. Henry has never had a submission in his entire career. He has won by KO, TKOs, and by decisions. Kind of interesting, right? That he only wins by decisions and KOs. So I don't see anybody submitting anyone in this uh, fight. And also the wrestling exchanges, the grappling exchanges will be interesting to see how Henry defends the takedowns from Marab. Because only thing that Marab does in his fights is he shoots for takedowns. One after another, takedowns after takedowns, trips, rolls, whatever you want to say. That is all Marab is going to do. Now, does he want? But the question is, can Henry use that same wrestling that uh, Marab uses? Can Henry defend them? Henry doesn't need to defend takedowns. Henry needs to attempt more takedowns on Marab. Because I'm fairly certain Henry can take Marab down. I mean, at least the prime version of Henry Sahudo. This is the 37 year old Henry Sahudo that lost to Aljamain Sterling in his last fight. But that was a close fight, to be honest. And Henry does well. And let's see. Let's see what Henry does in this fight. And I, for some weird reason, feel like Marab is going to win this fight by unanimous decision. And he's going to turn this into a boring fight, which should not be the case since both of them are really good wrestlers. But I feel like Marab is somehow going to make this fight a boring one. My prediction is Marab is going to win this fight by unanimous decision. Uh, okay, what else do we have here? Uh, what the hell? Jeff Neal versus Ian D. Kachado Gary, if you know what the C stands for. Um, he's from Ireland, 6 feet 3. The man, the myth, the legend Ian Gary, arguably the most hated fighter, one of the most hated personality in the world of mixed martial arts. And definitely the most hated person in UFC. It's like Conor McGregor did so many wrong stuff. He snorted cocaine, probably. Who knows? Who knows? Allegedly. Allegedly, he did a lot of weird stuff. He punched an old man, crashed his car. Like John Jones crashed his car, beat the Hell out of his uh, wife, his fiance, got into so many car crashes, snorted cocaine, was uh, driving under the influence, has done so many wrong things. But yet, John Jones is not half as hated as Ian Machado Gary. Imagine how bad do you have to be that you're hated more than John Jones, you're hated more than people uh, like, I don't know, Kobe coming. To, I mean, I like Kobe, but I used to like the version of Kobe that was waiting. But you get my point. There are many bad people in UFC. By bad, I mean they're like they do some questionable things, but nobody hates them. But everybody hates Ian Gary. 
He's fighting against Jeff Neal. Uh, Ian Gary hasn't been looking good. I don't mean his performance inside the ring, but outside the ring, the dude seems to say a lot of weird stuff, and he always seems to make more enemies. Recently, he said something about Rampage Jackson, and Rampage is a legend. Rampage is retired, Rampage is old, and he, for some reason, decided to pick a fight against Rampage Jackson, out of all people. Uh, yeah, he's a weird guy. He lives with a... He lives... He is still friends with his wife's ex-husband. I'm 23. And if my girlfriend says something that, hey, you know, you know, my ex is calling me, should I hang out with him? You know what, we can still be friends. No, no, that's a no-no to all the kids out there watching. If your girlfriend is really friends with your ex, just go, go away from her. Just go away, go away. Go to a different country, probably. Um, Ian Gary seems to have problems with everyone. Dion Edwards, he has to have problems with everybody. But... His fighting skills are pretty good. I'm not going to take away take that away from him. But also, he lacks finishing ability. He could not finish Neil uh, Neil Magny. Even though Neil Magny was completely destroyed in that fight, both physically, emotionally, and emotionally as well. And then when people started saying things about Ian Gary, he seems to have problem with it. But Jeff Neil, he was supposed to fight with Jeff Neil. Jeff Neil could not make weight or something. I, uh, probably he had some issues with his body. Uh, I don't know what, but Jeff Neal is a good fighter. In his last fight, he lost to Shafkat Rachmanov, if I'm not mistaken. That was a really good fight. Uh, he had his good moments. He was rocking Shafkat Rachmanov, but at the end, somehow Shafkat just managed to get a finish in the very end of that fight, in the last round. Shafkat is a machine. That's all I'm saying. Shafkat is on a different level compared to both Gary and Mac, uh, compared to both Gary and um, Jeff Neal. So in this fight. I don't know. I feel like Jeff Neal is going to have the advantage when it comes to the fans, when it comes to power. He has really good power. But Ian Gary is really long, so he has the ability to win this fight by staying outside. If he can just land his leg kicks, his oblique kicks, and he can, if he can land his jab from the outside, because he's significantly longer than Jeff Neal. Jeff Neal is not a small guy. He's 5'11", and he's a really well-built welterweight fighter. He is physically really strong. Even Shafkat Rachmanov had problems taking him down. But we did see Jeff Neal having problems when he fought against Wonder Boy. He could not really figure him out. And Ian Gary also has that kind of a style where he, he can move in a karate stand style. And another thing with Ian Gary is that he's even bigger compared to Wonder Boy Thompson. And he's younger. So he's, he's faster. His reaction timing is better. And also he has more power than Wonder Boy. Just because he's significantly bigger than him, he has a bigger frame. So, I don't know. I think if Ian Gary shows up mentally well in this fight, then I think he can give problems to Jeff Neal. Who do I see winning this fight? I want to see, as a fan, with everything going on, I want to see Jeff Neal win this fight by a knockout. But that's very highly unlikely. For some reason, I feel like Ian Gary will win this fight by unanimous decision again. Yeah, all I've been saying is people are going to win this fight by unanimous decision because that's what this card looks like. Anthony Hernandez by a unanimous decision. Morab, I don't see him finishing too many people. Too many people. And Gary hasn't finished anybody significant in his uh, recent fights. So, who has Ian Gary finished recently? Let me take a look at his record. Uh, that's Gary, that's Gary, that's... Yeah, that's Ian Machado, Gary. Okay. He hasn't finished. He finished D-Rod. Uh, that wasn't... I mean, D-Rod, that was in 2023. That was in May 2023, last year. In, but he could not finish Neil Magny. So that begs a really big question. Also, Neil Magny isn't really a slouch either, but Jeff Neal is a better fighter than uh, Neil Magny, at least at, at this point of his career. Gary is really young. That's another thing that we need to take into account. Gary is probably... How old is Gary? He's 26. He's only like 2-3 years uh, older than me. So considering how young he is, there is always room for him to improve. Both physically, emotionally, and mentally as well. I hope he doesn't end up crumbling. I mean, he was supposed to fight... Uh, was, who was he supposed to fight? Was he supposed to fight Jeff Neal in his last fight? He did not show up in the press conference with Kobe Covington and all of these fighters in there. Man. Weird dude, man. Weird dude. Uh, but I, I see him winning this fight. I see him winning this fight. For some weird reason, I feel like he can win this fight. Because skill-wise, he's a, he's, a, he's a really good striker. We need to give him props where props is due. But we also haven't seen him fight somebody at the level of Jeff Neal. 
We haven't seen him. We saw him fight against D Rod. D Rod is not exactly a top five fighter. D Rod also haven't really looked good. He's also old. So is Jeff Neal, but Jeff Neal has better power. He has got really good boxing. And he can kick. He can kick pretty good, but oof. I don't know, man. What should I say? Should I say Yan Gary is going to win this by unanimous decision? Where Yan Gary might win this fight, but and fans start booing him the moment he enters the octagon, people start booing him. Even when he wins, he boos him. I don't know. I don't know. I think Ian Gary is going to win this by unanimous decision. Another fight. I just don't. That just makes no sense. I don't know why I'm, I'm saying this, but I want Jeff Neal to win. I just want Jeff Neal to win just as a moral victory. And for Ian Gary to take some sense. Because look, what Ian Gary is going through is the same situation that Diego Sanchez was going through with Joshua Fabia. Yeah. I hope Ian Gary gets back to his senses and he's starts fighting not just fighting outside of fighting he starts taking care of his life his family in a better way because he has made a mistake i'm 23 trust me i know i know i'm young so i know the stuff kind of stuff this man i know what uh joe uh, i think joe rogan says something the power that uh good looking women have over men is is uh weird so jeff neil if he wants to win this fight all he has to do is box i do not see him as a grappler but I do not see Ian Gary as a grappler either. So Jeff Neal in his last fight, Shafkat was a really good grappler. So I don't know. They're both going to win. Let's see. They're both going to fight each other. And I just don't know who's going to win. Probably Ian Machado Gary. I don't want to talk too much about this fight. I've already given him too many short light. Like. Now this, Robert Whittaker versus Paolo Costa. Finally, Paolo Costa is fighting. God knows after how many years this man is fighting. How many years? For how many years we have waited for Paulo Costa to fight? I think his last fight was against Luke Rockhold. And that was the last fight of Luke Rockhold. And yet, he retired, came back, fought in PKFC, got his teeth broken. And yet, Paulo Costa hasn't even fought. He was supposed to fight against Hamzad in Abu Dhabi. But he could not do it due to some infection. I think it was a tough infection. It looked nasty. And by nasty, I mean nasty. I've seen some bad stuff and that was scary. Uh, Robert Lesley lost to Rickers in July 2023. That was last year. And that loss has aged like beautifully as a fine wine. Because Rickers is currently the UFC middleweight champion of the world. What does Rickers do, Plessy and Paulo Costa have in power? Uh, in, uh, well, I am fumbling. What does DDP and Paulo Costa have in common? They are both really big. Um, middleweights they have really good physical strength so i think paulo costa can win this fight again i do not see how he is going to finish robert Whitaker because duplessis had that punching power i don't think paulo has that kind of punching power because paulo is more of a pressure fighter he's going to pressure you but robert is pretty good with you know managing the pressure managing the distance but the amount of wars that robert Whitaker has been in is crazy he has had two uh, wars with izzy he got really badly beaten up with easy in the first fight then those two wars that he had against romero and i don't know who's going to win this fight finally paulo costa is fighting that's a big win for all of us he lost to marvin vettori then prior to that he lost to adesanya in 2020 2021 2022 and he hasn't fought since august 2022 so i'm just going to say Robert Whittaker is going to win this fight again by a unanimous decision. I think this is going to be a three-round fight, right? I don't know if, this, if it is going to be a five-round fight. If it is a five-round, then I see... I don't know. I just don't know. I haven't seen much of Paulo Costa in a really, really long time. In his last performance against Luke Rockhold, he did not look that good. And that was Luke Rockhold that was going to retire. It wasn't a prime Luke Rockhold. So, I don't know. I, I genuinely do not know what to say about this fight. For some weird reason, I feel like Paulo Costa is going to win. But skill-wise, Robert should win this. Hey, yo, what was I saying? Yep. Uh, I was saying that Paulo Costa is somehow probably, I feel like he's going to find a way to win. But then again, skill-wise, if you look at it, Robert Whitaker is a better fighter. Paulo Costa, I mean, he's been training, but somehow I feel like Robert is going to win this fight. Let's just give one more chance to Robert Whittaker that he's going to win this fight and probably going to retire. He's a legend, man. He is a legend. Robert is a legend. Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy. But I don't know Robert Whittaker win this fight mm, by, again, 
by a split decision or something because that's how Paulo Costa's fight has been going. His fights have been going recently. So Robert Whittaker by a split decision. The main event. Now this, this is what I've been talking about for a long, long time. Ilya Topuria has finally got an opportunity to fight for the featherweight championship. And Volk in his last fight got knocked out clean by the pound for pound number one fighter in the UFC right now. Islam Mahachev. Now, Taporia is not Mahachev. Let's be honest about that. They're completely two different fighters. I'm not saying Taporia is bad, but Mahachev is, a, is in a league of his own. And also size makes a difference. That's what she said. But, uh, like I said, I don't know. I just genuinely do not know who's going to win in this fight. I feel like, I think in this one, I'm going to go with Ilya Taporia just because I want to because I've been saying it for a very long time, I feel like a lot of people are going to look... I'm not going to say it's going to be easy for Ilya Toporia to win this fight, but I feel like he's going to have the third round finish. Or maybe I'm completely wrong and uh, Volk is going to win this by first round KO or something. Because Volk has the tools. But the thing is, Volk is probably 37 years old at this point of time. How old is Volk? I need to check out how old is Volk. Why is it so slow? Shardot is really slow. I mean, I cannot blame them. It's an old website. He's 35 and Toporia is probably 28. Toporia is really young. I need to say that. Uh, Volk has had 29 fights, 26 wins and 3 losses. His losses are against Mahachev and I think one loss was in his debut. Head kick against Corey Nelson. I mean, this goes to show that if you want to finish... Uh, Alexander Volkanovsky, then you have to throw a head kick. Was that in heavyweight division? Probably. When he was fighting Corey Nelson or probably welterweight. Because Volk has been fighting in a number of weight classes. He was At one point of time, he was 214 pounds, 214 pounds. Which is about 90 kgs, 90-91 kgs. Probably a bit, probably 95 kgs. 5 feet 6, 96 kgs, a lot. So he's physically really strong. That's something that we don't take into account. Uh, and in this fight, he's going to be tuned in. It, it is not a short notice fight like his last fight against Mahachev, where it was a short notice fight. He showed up and he won and he lost. And I mean, I don't know what he was thinking. Fighting against Islam Mahachev in a short notice fight is not exactly a great idea. But... It is what it is. I mean, that's what Volk does. Uh, wow. Uh, for Toporia, I think Toporia has the grappling skills to match with Volk. Toporia might be the be uh, best grappler that we have in the featherweight division. I think Mozart Ivloev, he's also a really good grappler. Diego Sanchez is a good grappler, but the level of competition that Ilya Toporia has faced is better than them. And also, Ilya has knockout power. I don't know how to say it, but he has knockout power. He has knocked out people in the lightweight division as well. And that is where it will be interesting to see what game plan Iliad follows. He is he seems like really confident. I hope he does not get arrogant and he does not look ahead of or he does not. I don't know how to say it. Uh, I just hope he does not underestimate. He does not uh, he does not underestimate Alexander Volkanovsky, arguably one of the best fighters ever one of the greatest to ever do it he might be the greatest featherweight is him and jose Aldo. holloway is in there in the conversation but he defeated holloway three times so i think in the first fight he defeated him clean second fight clean uh, no second fight was a controversial win third fight he defeated him clean and who is holloway going to fight next he's going to fight justin gaethje so i think that's that's where the holloway thing ends uh fighting a justin gaethje in lightweight is not exactly a great thing uh, I, I, I just don't think that's a great decision on the part of Max Holloway. But we'll see. We'll see. That's going to be a banger. And I think Holloway, uh, I think Justin Gaethje is going to do some bad things. Uh, but Ilya Tuporia versus uh, Alexander Volkanovsky. Striking-wise, I think Volkanovsky is a better striker. I think he's faster. But then again, Tuporia has... I mean, Tuporia, he's defensively sound. He's not exactly a bad uh, striker himself. Because he, we have seen him well in his last fight against uh, Josh Emmett he looked good but he did not look as good as what uh, Alexander Volkanovsky looked against um, 
Yaya Rodriguez. And Ilya's last fight was Josh Emmett. I think that's his best fight till date. And that's his best opponent. So I'm kind of worried about the Kaya, the fighters that he has faced. I don't think he has faced anyone. And I've been and by that I mean nobody that Ilya Toporia has for is anywhere close to Alexander Volkanovsky and his opponents. Volkanovsky has fought with Holloway three times. He has fought with uh, Mahachev two times, and he fought for five rounds against Mahachev, and he won a couple of rounds in there. So that's kind of interesting, which I don't see Toporia. I don't know. I just want to pick Toporia just out of randomness, just out of just want to pick something wild. But I think skill wise, Alexander Volkanovsky has it. Grappling wise, I think Toporia is a better grappler than Alexander Volkanovsky. But Volkanovsky can mix it in. He's, he can mix it. He knows when to shoot for a takedown and he knows when to strike with you. So I think fight IQ, I think Alexander Volkanovsky has a better fight IQ. But Ilya Toporia, being the younger fighter, he does take risk. And against Volk, you have to decide, do you want to take a risk and do something crazy and get a win? Or just win by, or just lose by a unanimous decision. So I think Ilya Toporia is going to win this fight. For some reason, I want to pick Ilya Toporia. Maybe I'll be wrong. Maybe... Uh, I just don't know, man. I just don't know. I just feel like Ilya Toporia is going to win this because he should be a underdog. If he's a favorite, then I think matchmakers are weird. He's 27 years old. He's, he's uh, here. It says he's 5'8". I think he's 5'7". They're not exactly tall people. I mean, Falk is probably 5'5", five, 5'6", five, five, on a crude day, and yet he is willing to fight against anybody out there. That's a scary man. Uh, I don't know, dude. Who, who should I pick? I'm going to do a poll. I'm going to do a poll. And I haven't uh, given a poll right now. I just want to... I haven't watched any videos of any other creator where they're predicting these videos. I just want to make my own prediction without watching anybody. I just don't want anybody to influence my decision of uh, regarding choosing and uh, choosing the probable winner of this fight. So I'm just going to say Ilya Tuporia wins this by some crazy finish. Does it make sense? Yeah, that's my weird brain talking. So I guess that's it. That's it. That's uh, all the predictions that I'm going to talk about. Uh, let me take a. Let me just do a recap. So starting from this fight, Rinya Nakamura versus Carlos Vera. I think Rinya Nakamura is going to win this fight either by unanimous decision or by a finish. Justin Tafa is going to knock out Marcos Rosario de Lima. Amanda Lemos is going to beat Mackenzie Dern probably a TKO. Roman Kopilov versus Anthony Hernandez. I see Anthony Hernandez by a. Unanimous decision, Mirab Dupalishvili by an unanimous decision against Henry Sohudo. Jeff Neal versus Ian Gary Again, Ian Gary by a split decision or maybe a unanimous decision. Robert Whittaker, Paulo Costa. I think Robert Whittaker wins this one by a split decision. And it's an entertaining fight. Ilya Toporia versus Alexander Volkanovsky. I say Ilya Toporia by some weird finish. By some weird finish. And probably a lot of people are going to be angry with it. So I guess that's it. That's it, guys. That's my prediction for uh, UFC 298. It's a really long video, probably. So, but it is what it is, man, when you got to talk about all of this. I just don't want to make separate videos for all of this. But it is what it is, man. It is what it is. So, please subscribe to my channel. I've got very few subscribers. And if you enjoy the video, then drop a like. And please share these videos to your friends and family who watch MMA. And write something stupid in the comment section. Maybe people start fighting, which makes I'll get more, which means that I'll get more uh, interaction. And that's it, guys. That's it. Peace out.